Hey, welcome back to my channel. So my project for the Dragon Con Page to Sage contest is to redesign the Scarlet O'Hara curtain dress. And not only am I redesigning the curtain dress to make it more 1860s appropriate, I'm also making it into an evening gown. Whereas in the movie, she has a walking dress on, which is more accurate to the book. I decided that Scarlet's personality feels more like she would show up in an evening gown to somewhat seduce this man into giving her money. So we're doing an evening gown. And I also just kind of wanted to make an 1860s evening gown. So I've already posted a video of my 1860s corset. I'll put it up in the cards and down in the description. So that is one of my first foundational garments. The next two pieces I'm going to need are the crinoline and the petticoat. So let's start with the crinoline. And then I will post separate videos detailing the bodice, and the skirt and because I had to be extra the quick change part of the outfit because I can't just walk on stage in one costume I have to change into a second so that will be a separate video but for today we're just gonna focus on the crinoline so for that I'm going to need um, some cotton I just use cotton muslin some boning nectar belting a belt buckle so with that let's get into crafting. So first I cut out three of the bag on the fold following the pattern and I transferred over the stitching lines using a heat erase pen. I pinned these sections together at the sides but I did not pin the last two together so that it did not complete the circle just yet. After I stitched these together I ironed my seam allowance flat and then zigzag stitched on each side of the allowance to hold down the edges. Then I folded the bag in half, pinned along the top, and stitched that in place. Stopping my stitching six inches on each end so that there is a 12 inch gap in the middle. After stitching together, I turned the bag right side out, and then I pinned the open edges together, stitched that, and gently pulled along the top so that it folded in the raw edges and created this sort of open pocket where the raw edge is folded inside. Because I used heat erase marker, I did not go ahead and iron this just yet. Instead, I moved on to pinning down the bag so that the boning channels that I had marked won't move while stitching. Now it's time to iron to work out all these wrinkles and erase the heat erase pen. Next, I needed to make the ribbons that connect the bag to the waistband and hold the additional boning. So I got this, I can't say this, uh, gross grain ribbon, goss grain ribbon, something like that. And using the pattern piece, um, I went ahead and measured out eight strips. And I transferred over the markings for the boning channels on each strip. So next I need to mark where the ribbons will be stitched onto the top of the bag. So starting at the center back, I worked around the bag, placing a mark seven and a half inches from the center and then every 15 inches from there so that each ribbon will be 15 inches away from the next ribbon. I also folded the ribbons in half and stitched along the top and bottom of each marked boning channel as shown on the pattern. Next, I pinned the ribbons in place and sewed them to the top of the bag. Finally, I have this belting piece that I ordered from Farthingales. I cut it to size and added this belt clasp. I will say that in my next crinoline build, I will not be using this belting material at all. It is not sturdy enough to hold up to the weight of the steel boning of the crinoline. I actually plan to use a an actual leather belt instead which should be sturdy enough to hold up to the weight. Next I get to cut the boning. So I purchased my boning in roll a roll from Farthingales. I had actually ordered too little boning. My math was completely inaccurate but I used the measurements marked on this pattern to come up with the total but apparently I was wrong when trying to convert it from inches to millimeters so I was short but that wound up working out really well because uh, the, it, the crinoline is actually too heavy for my back injury so I decided not to add the missing bones into the crinoline 
So it's not exactly accurate, but it is functional. So I have my boning and I have my snips. So I'm about to make a really funny mistake. All this boning is under a lot of tension. And when that tension is suddenly released, it goes crazy. <laughs> Anyway, I went ahead and cut the boning out as indicated on the pattern. So I cut hoops 10 through 7 at the medium length because that was the circumference I was making. And then I did hoops 5 and 6 and then hoop 1. I'm missing hoops 2, 3, and 4 on my crinoline. The instructions said to overlap the last four inches of the boning and fasten those or clamp in, in place with tape or wire or some other means. However, I purchased these boning connectors that just slide onto the ends. So this means that when I cut my boning originally, every bone had an extra four inches that I had to go back and cut off. I actually think it was four and a half because the boning connector added a little bit of um, length to it. So that was a little frustrating to waste some of the expensive steel boning, but that's what I had to do. Once I had the hoop wires cut, I was able to slide four of them into the boning channel in the bag as marked on the pattern. And then for the boning that went through the ribbons, I slid them into bone casing and then slid them through the openings that I made when I stitched the folded ribbon together earlier. And then I slid the belting through the top loops of the ribbons and that's it. That's all it is to make a crinoline. I do have to say I am moderately happy with it, but I am making a new one that's going to be much bigger than this for my upcoming um, Sakizo build and I plan on using completely different fabric making my own pattern for the bottom, doing a few steps differently that I think will make the construction of this a lot easier. So stay tuned for that video.